Welcome to today's lesson for Wednesday the 15th of September 2021, semester 2, term 3. Okay, let's do a quick recap. So thus far, we have been working on build-up tasks. Now, from what I have received, you can see the difference between the ones that were rushed versus the ones that were consistently worked with during the weeks when certain tasks were given. Certain students were asking for assistance and um, input regarding their draft copies, uh, which was gladly given to revise their work and work to a more accurate delivery in the end. <clears throat> we looked at different research methodologies, namely quantitative, qualitative and mixed methods. Then we looked at what is data collection and the instruments that you can use and the one you were instructed to use to collect your data. Then, once you have collected it, we had to analyze the data and present the findings, either through percentage or <clears throat> through text. Then, lastly, you had to then take those findings and compare or contrast it to your literature review and see what similarities or differences you found using the Venn diagram as a summary and then expanding on it in your new discussion and conclusion. So to date, I am slowly marking your tasks and it should be all done soon. Um, quick feedback is that there is still improvement areas regarding academic language, vocabulary and grammar, and then your stance subjective stance that still comes across when using the words I think or we think. Um, so there's still the subjective elements within the task and then finally the safe assign um, component which I added to the assignment <coughs> helps me identify who has outright plagiarized from internet sources, from other students copy and paste with regards to um, the surveys, the questionnaires, the responses in the questionnaires, even the questions that are used in the questionnaires, some are direct copy and paste from the internet. And so safer sign helps me identify those areas and if it was identified, marks were deducted um, because plagiarism is definitely not accepted within an academic environment. So what you can look forward to as we close the academic year of 2021 for term three and term four there are four tasks remaining <clears throat> one of which you will get at the end of this lesson and these tasks will be looking at your reading ability your understanding of what you read your analysis of what you read your reflection on what you read and then submitting a comment on what you have read there will be different questions or statements per section which you have to write and motivate. You firstly, it will be an online submission, not through Blackboard, but Google Form. So to be data conscious and sensitive, we will first complete it offline, meaning in a normal Word document, and then just copy and paste in your answers <clears throat> from the Word document to the Google Form. But I'll go through that um, now soon in this lesson. So you have to remember that what well, my spelling. You have to remember that you are now in control of someone else's assignment, and your input matters now, and your academic language and use is needed more than ever. So you are going to be peer reviewing each other's work. You have to respect and treat your peers' work with care and professionalism, and please, your feedback must be of an academic and objective nature. So don't be subjective and use I think, I think, um, constantly referring to the first person. Um, use critical analysis and objective feedback. So let's have a look at what the task document would look like. Okay, so here we go. Let me just close that. So your peer review questionnaire First task, remember we have four. <clears throat> this one's due date is the 22nd of September, no later than 23.59. And Google Forms provides me with a date and a timestamp, so late submissions will be noticed. The task total is 50. First completed offline, and then 
after answering the questions and you are happy with the questions then you transfer it to google to the google form copy and paste now this is for many reasons beneficial it's going to allow you to work offline so not using your data immediately while working in google and it allows you to first check revise and double check your answers before committing to submitting once you submit you will not be allowed to resubmit i'm only going to allow one submission and if you make a mistake on that submission unfortunately i will not accept another one so you have to first ensure that all your answers are correct offline before committing to online so i'm going to be very strict with this regarding the last four and deadline is deadline if you do not submit on this deadline automatic zero once you are done with your answers and you know that they are correct or you are happy with your performance in your answers you will then click on this link over here to access the google form so i'll first show you the form in the word format and then we'll go to the google form so you will first indicate your class list number okay i'm just going to change that to class list number and i'll show you what i mean by class list number so this left hand side is your class list number and the right hand side is your peer the one that you will be assigned to i'll get to that in a minute you will not be choosing your own friend i will be assigning you a partner you will have to use a rating scale so between one and five and each number you don't need to rewrite the words or the meaning you will just use the number and i will know what they mean and you can also see what they mean here so for example there's a table format at the bottom you will put in your you will just check the area of um, analysis you will review it and then insert your motivation as to answering a question i'll show you now and then you put in your rating for that section you cannot write higher than five and you cannot write lower than zero it's in between one and five so <clears throat> you have to rate and motivate the following areas please do not provide yes no responses that will not be accepted you must give a rating plus an academic type review or motivation for each section a maximum mark of five per section is only obtainable based on your rating that you give the person and the grand total is 15 so each area total of maximum of five so this will be related to your first assignment you did in semester one the one where you provided the mind map the introduction and the background the main research question so you're going to be analyzing each of these sections on the task of the person that you will be assigned to so on the mind map you have to now analyze it and look does the mind map identify the key theme and expand on the related focused areas for discussion so you have to analyze the quality of the person's mind map is it just a slapdash type of mind map that has no significance, no meaning, no relevance? You can't understand it. Or was there thought put into it? So you will give the person a rating. Was it excellent, satisfactory, good, good but requires improvement or one not yet competent? So that was not a mind map at all. Plus, you have to motivate. So if you give the student, for example, five the mind map not i believe the mind map remember not first person you have to be objective so the mind map illustrates a clear thought pattern of the theme and related topics for discussion the mind map is easily understood so for each motivation you have to give no less than two solid or full sentences so again no yes no's and you have to give two full sentences for each motivation either depending on the rating that you're giving is it positive or negative but it has to be academic and constructive 
So please be careful. This is somebody's work that you are working with. So respect it and treat it with professionalism. Then you will look at the title of the task. Does the title indicate the research theme? So you will look back at the mind map. So does the title relate to what was given in the mind map? Is there a clear inclusion of the problem that is going to be researched? And does it include the research population? So if I look back at my sample for assignment one I gave you. Let's have a look quickly. Here we go. So if I go to my title. Okay, so here you can see, for example, my mind map. Yes, it's giving me the theme, employee satisfaction, but I would give this individual, if this was my uh, task that I received, I would give it possibly a three or a four because it very briefly indicates the areas of discussion which could have been expanded on, for example. So there would be a rating of a three, and my motivation would be that it's very uh, brief. There's, it looks just like a framework. There's no expansion of any discussion points. Then if I go to my title, now if I look at the criteria that was required, does it relate to the research, uh, to the mind map? Yep, I can see employee satisfaction. So yes, it's related. Then is there a clear indication of the problem uh, factors in influencing employee satisfaction so that would be the problem also we're looking at employee satisfaction and are we including the research population yes because it says who are we looking at we are looking at local government departments so this topic would get a four or a five for example and then the motivation the topic clearly indicates the theme as given in the mind map it also indicates the problem area that will be researched as well as the population upon which the research will be based so that would be your motivation and so you would go on for each section of the year the introduction and the background is there a clear let me just change this quickly there we go does it provide a clear understanding of the context? So do you understand why this is actually a problem? So you have to read the person's introduction and understand what the person is saying here in the introduction. Does it help you gain some background information as to the problem this person wants to research? Okay. Then you will look at the problem statement. Does it clearly indicate in no more than two sentences what the larger problem is and what the specific research wishes to inquire or solve? So here you will look at your problem statement and see if you can get an understanding of the bigger picture, like why is this a problem, and then also what the researcher wishes to resolve. Then you're going to look at the main research questions and sub-questions. So does it clearly direct the main question? Is it directed to the problem? <clears throat> so the question that they're asking here, is it helping to solve the problem that they have stated in the previous section? And does the three sub-questions assist the main question? So if the bigger question was, for example, yeah, what influences employee satisfaction? That's the bigger question. So the smaller questions, does it help solve the bigger one so there must be some relation or connection between the sub questions and the main research question <clears throat> then you will go over to your aim and objectives does the the sentence that's provided indicate what the purpose of this research is okay does it indicate what this research wishes to achieve okay then your objectives once more will be um, the helping aid to the aim. So does the objectives relate to the aim? Is there a connection? So if the research aims to determine what the internal and external factors are that motivates employee satisfaction, how will you achieve that? So you will conduct a research a literature review, you will conduct interviews with employees, and then you will uh, review a performance appraisal documents. 
So with these three objectives, it will help you achieve the overall aim of the research. And then you will go to your literature review. Does the literature review speak directly to the topic and research problem? And all literature is related to the topic. So here you will actually read through the person's literature and then see if what they are talking about in the literature, what they have chosen as literature, is related to the problem and related to the title. Then the last two sections over here, the discussion and conclusion. Did the student soundly summarize and argue the concluding points? Did the student bring across the main points from the literature review and how the research problem, main research question and sub-questions were addressed? So with the literature review, do you see that the student, what they have read up on and presented, does that actually answer the questions that was stated over here? Did it answer what motivates employees? Did it answer what does local government do to motivate employees? And did it answer what training is presented at local government? So you have to check the literature in relation to the main research questions and sub-questions. Then the reference list. Did the student use the proper Harvard referencing style? And yeah, I'm giving you an example of how the referencing style should look. Just put that in italics for you. It should be the author's surname, the initial, a full stop, the year, a full stop, the title, a full stop, the journal name or name of the journal, then the volume number, and then in brackets the issue number, and then after that the place of the article, so University of Johannesburg or something like that, or the publisher. And were they and was the five references recent? So basically, were they older than five years? So recent means within the last five years. So if we are in 2021, it must not be older than 2016. And were they academic articles? So not websites. So if you see, for example, www.google.co.za, that's not the reference. Right, so there that is incorrect. So again, don't forget, give it a rating of between 1 to 5 and motivate your reason for the rating in an objective manner. And then finally, <clears throat> the overall academic language. Did the student use clean, clear and sound academic language, vocabulary and grammar that made the research easy to understand and not bombastic? So basically, did the student use big overinflated words just to sound clever but it made no sense at all or was the words um, relevant to bringing the point across so i'm going to close this assignment there we go. and then your overall impression and feedback to your peer you need to put that in at the bottom you need to list were there any pros cons um, plus points negative points and areas of improvement, and remember to provide objective feedback. So here, no less than five sentences. So your overall feedback, okay? I'm just going to indicate here, no less. <clears throat> okay, let me put it up here. No less than three to five sentences full sentences okay so please don't don't provide lazy sentences okay then you have to give the student a mark out of 50 so remember you've been rating them over here so you add up this column and you give them a mark out of 50 so say for example <clears throat> you have 40 out of 50 and the percentage, you will take the mark divided by 0 0.5. So if I take 40, let's just show you over the calculator. If I take 40 divided by 0 0.5, that gives me 80. So that means the student got an 80%. Okay, and then you will give your overall feedback over here. 
just merge these two here we go so that's my example i'm going to delete that save that and this section is mandatory okay so now that you know how that looks in word format let's see how it looks oh, let me just get it again quickly let's see what it looks like on google so once you are done over there you will then access this link over here and you will then open up google and now you will just copy and paste your answers basically so your your name or your details over there your peers details will come over here all right and then your mind map answer your title your intro right those things over there and then you have to indicate the mark that is given as well and then it will tally up in the end and your overall impression your mark out of uh, 50 so here's the example again of 40 out of 50 so you will write that mark in over here um, it's not an automated marking system because there's no right or wrong answers you have to use your discretion and then you indicate your answer over here for me and then you will submit please remember you are only allowed to submit once any errors will not be accepted with your second submission submission so be careful okay now that we had a look at that your partner partners are assigned to you already and it will be sent by a pdf document each week or with a presentation you cannot swap and no complaints if your partner is a deregistered student or no longer um, in your class or in the group the second year group please notify me as soon as possible let's see quickly how the random selector works so here's a worksheet over here that i've created with all your student numbers in so let me first focus on let me move that out of the way let's first focus here so this is your actual classroom number or class list number right so remember this section over here where you asked for your class list number that will be this number over here okay and your actual student numbers are next to it now in the class there are 288 learners okay and your natural student numbers so what i've done was i've inserted a random select formula that when i recalculate you'll see these numbers changing over here and i've can you see they're constantly changing and pairing up two numbers so for example if you receive the random selector list and you see 206 and 253 for example now you will go look who's 206 or you may be number 206 let's have a look so there's number 206 that's that person over there and who are they paired up with they are paired up with 253 so who's 253 so now you go look on the list who's 253 oh there's 253 so now you will go and pair up with this individual so you will look at it in pairs and your number will be paired up with another number on the class list over here so these numbers relate to these class list numbers and then once you found your partner you will then email and get in contact and you should know your email address format already it's your student number at mycput.ac.za so these are randomly selected numbers which are then used to assign you a partner and this will be used for the four different assignments okay so get time to get to know new friends i'm just going to save that quickly close that we went through that so that is how we select your partner so important dates to remember term 3 ends on the 23rd of september then term 4 is between the 5th and 25th of october we will have to publish our marks by between the 6th and the 10th of november reassessments will take place between the 11th and the 17th of november and those students who qualify for reassessments are those who get between 45 and 48 out of 100 what to expect 
you have your first assignment which is given on the 15th due on the 22nd it's a peer review of assignment one then the following when we return in term four on the sixth i will give you another one which is due on the 12th <clears throat> also for assignment one but this time you'll get a different partner then on the 13th you will receive another task which is due on the 20th and that is regarding assignment number two same type of questionnaire setup but a different partner again and then the same will apply for the 20th which you'll get a new task for due for the 25th which is the last day of term four and again peer-to-peer -peer review for assignment number two same questionnaire different partner okay so your task for this week will be to check who is your partner get in contact immediately so just let me show you here this will be the pdf that you will receive via your class reps so you yeah, have already indicated who the partners are it will remain like this it can't change it's a pdf document so for example person 79 is paired up with person 108 so check this list number over here who you are and who your partner is okay so that will be sent with the assignment then make friends email each other or whatsapp each other get in contact perhaps you, it's a bonus if you know the person already um, if they don't have the assignment well you're gonna have to work on a solution get in contact with me and i'll help you work out the solution but this is about problem solving start you start assessing and submitting and stay in contact in case you need any clarity of the individual on the assignment but please i have the original assignment so do not make any changes to give a positive review as i have marked all these assignments and nobody got 100 percent so if i'm going to get any fairy tale reviews i will definitely flag your assignment and check it out um, personally and then get you and your partner in due date is very strict 22nd of September 2359 and that's on Google Forms. Please don't email me the Word document. Um, do it offline first and then submit online. If you have a problem, communicate it early and not on the last minute. Um, and please make sure your computer doesn't crash on the night of the assignment when it's due. Let it crash way before the assignment due date so that you can get it fixed and up and running for the due date um thank you for attending today's lesson if you're watching this you are watching the video if not there will be a link for the video version which you should be watching to understand the assignment and instructions and i look forward to receiving your queries tasks and feedback and remember solution before problem or excuses